everyone. My name is Adam Kaneen, and I'm the Victorian State Government Commissioner for North Asia. That's our offices in Seoul and in Tokyo. Today, I'm going to speak to you about investment opportunities in the state of Victoria. You've probably heard of Melbourne before. That's the capital of Victoria. Let's get started. So this first slide just provides you with an overview of Victoria. Probably like all the other states are saying, very similar things. A couple of things I'd like to highlight for you. The first one is first-class livability. You probably heard that Melbourne was rated the world's most livable city for seven years in a row, and in fact, in the top three for the last 10 years or so. I'd also like to highlight that it's called the Gateway to Asia Pacific for Australia. It's because the port of Melbourne is the largest port in the Southern Hemisphere, and also the Melbourne's International Airport is an, the only airport in Australia to be operating 24 hours a day. It's also Australia's fastest growing city. Uh, you probably think Sydney's the largest city in Australia, but just this year, uh, they're around about the same at about 4.7 million people each. Uh, Melbourne will continue to grow uh, a little bit faster than Sydney. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So let's move to the next slide. A few points for Victoria alongside the story of Australia. Every choice you make in Australia is a blue choice cho uh, uh, selection for uh, investment. In Victoria, we have a few things which make us a little bit different, we think. Unlike the rest of Australia, or many of the large states in Australia, Victoria has no traditional minerals uh, exports for its economy. Many of the other states have up to 30 or 40% of the economy underpinned by really strong export earnings from minerals and energy. Victoria, on the other hand, doesn't have any at all. So we're very much like Korea in that we rely on innovation, uh, manufacture and export for our economy. Our economy on its own for the state of Victoria is actually larger than uh, the economies of either New Zealand or Singapore or the Philippines. So on its own, the state of Victoria is as large as uh, many of Asian countries. The other thing is that Victoria is only 3% of Australia's land mass, and yet it has 25% of its GDP and 25% of its population. The population of Victoria, about 6.8 million at the moment, will continue to grow to, towards 10 million. And the population of Melbourne, which is 4.7 at the moment, will continue to grow potentially to more than 8 million people by 2050. This will make the uh, impetus for economic growth continue as we progress. And here's some of that story there. Uh, Melbourne has an $80 billion uh, uh, infrastructure investment pipeline. It has to. The growing number of population, the, the expanding city, it's expanding it's in a circular fashion, just like Seoul, means that road, rail, and air links are all very important. And Victoria is expending a $80 billion pipeline to make sure that happens. Uh, also, it's home to 40 of Australia's top 200 companies listed on the stock exchange. About five or six years ago, Victoria used to be Australia's vehicle, motor vehicle manufacturing hub. Ford, GM, and Toyota all had manufacturing facilities in Victoria, about 200,000 vehicles. Um, due to the continuing uh, growth in the Australian economy, the price for vehicles and labour force meant that it was not economical to make them in Australia. So we transitioned from traditional manufacturing to uh, new new tech-based manufacturing. And you can see here some examples of our uh, research institutions and universities partnering with the world's major corporations to explore and um, take, take advantage of the opportunity for those collaborations. Melbourne University, and you can see in the top there, is ranked a little bit higher than Seoul University and Tokyo University, um, and is collaborating with hundreds of companies, including, including Boeing. But you can see the other collaborations there, Thales for, for, for um, Defence, Siemens, Johnson & Johnson, uh, IBM, some of the largest corporations in the world are partnering with the research uh, and university institutes in Victoria. And to talk about that, in Australia, we only have 40 universities. That doesn't sound like very many, but our own universities are quite large. A couple that you can see there at the top, Melbourne University has 60,000 students and Monash University has about 80,000 students. All of the universities you can see there in Victoria are rated in the top 500, and two of them are in the top 100, Melbourne and Monash. You can also see there that we have uh, government-owned uh, vocational training providers uh, called TAFEs, and they're producing the workforce we need as we rapidly move to, to advanced manufacturing uh, and um, bio and life sciences technical services. Um, 
the other thing I'd like to sh show you here is that we have 13, well, actually about 28 institutes in Melbourne, Victoria, in the life sciences area, making it world top three alongside of Boston and London for uh, medical research and development. Some of the uh, Korean companies who've already invested in, in, in Victoria include names you'll, you'll well know. Cosmax MBT is a nutraceuticals manufacturing company. Mail Dairy is the largest dairy producer in, in Korea, has a protein a production plant outside of Geelong, a satellite city about 80 kilometres from Melbourne. GSENC Engineering is the major engineering partner for the Northeast uh, uh, Link uh, freeway construction, $10 billion. Hyundai Corporation is growing... Um, Organic Mushrooms, Hummer Defense has just signed an $8 billion uh, uh, procurement contract with the Australian Army for land vehicles. Uh, and you can see Lotte Duty Free is now the uh, concession runner for the Duty Free at Melbourne Airport and uh, Common Farm, of course, for veterinary sciences, um, vaccines and pharmaceuticals. Every country in the world is now looking at new energy opportunities. I'm delighted to tell you that in Victoria that we're no different, in fact, we have a net zero emissions target of zero by uh, 2050. To do that, uh, you can see some of the um, uh, categories there. In wind, in offshore wind, between 2030 and 2040, we'll be putting nine gigawatts of offshore wind in. Um, we have large-scale solar uh, developments happening, and in fact, a lot of companies are testing the market with five, 10, 30 megawatt uh, installations, which we can help you uh, source and develop. And of course, you've probably heard of the HESC project, which is um, the world's first successful liquid uh, hydrogen manufacturer and export uh, to Japan um, from uh, liquefaction um, of hydrogen from brown, uh, developed from brown coal uh, in combination with CCS to make it carbon neutral. I'd just like to highlight down the bottom there that Carbonet, Victorian government's um, uh, carbon sequestration organization has actually signed an MOU with Korea's KCCUS in October to to explore opportunities and uh, collaboration in uh, CCS. Uh, Victoria is only 3% of Australia's land mass, but it is 26% uh, of Australia's uh, food and fibre exports and about 30% uh, of all production of food and fibre in Australia. Uh, the agricultural exports uh, have been traditionally one of the major uh, uh, export earners for Victoria, and it's an excellent area for for investment. As you can see, some majors, Mondelez, Asahi, Nestle, Mars, Kagome, some pretty big names there already invested in Victoria for food production and supply chain security. But as we transitioned away from traditional manufacturing, of course, we started in investing heavily and developing our capability in the areas like fintech, cloud, and digital games. Uh, you can see some of the names of some of the uh, unicorns that have been developed from startups in, in Australia in the fintech community. Um, and in digital games, for example, of the 200 studios in Australia, about 130 of them are actually located in Melbourne and in Victoria, making us the major player in uh, digital games production and development in Australia. As I already said, digital health, AI, and cybersecurity are important. Digital health um, particularly um, is in collaboration with um, almost all of our uh, tertiary institutions, uh, and we can see some of the major players there, uh, CM Medical, ClinCloud, and others. Cybersecurity underpinning our fintech success. Uh, major players, Siemens, Leonardo, NEC, et cetera, are, are in there, and indeed, all of our institutions have graduates from cybersecurity. That's nine of our universities, all have cybersecurity graduates providing workforce for the growing opportunity. And once again, advanced um, uh, manufacturing. This is where our traditional manufacturing has matured to, particularly in relation to um, uh, advanced materials, carbon fibers, titaniums, um, nanotech, uh, and indeed also on the other side, recycling of those materials is really important. You can see some of the defense majors, Thales and others, and traditional uh, automotive manufacturing supply chain, Bosch, Ford, still uh, strong in our market. And it shows you a clear opportunity for partnership. Uh, health and life sciences. Melbourne is often joined with Boston and London in terms of the three largest uh, bio and life sciences uh, research and development cities in the world. I'd like you to just focus there on clinical trials for a second. One of the uh, increasingly growing markets in Victoria is uh, CROs to, uh, providing clinical trial services to Korean drug developments uh, and manufacturers. You can shorten 
your your co uh, commercialization phase by running clinical trials in Australia who have a relationship between our uh, authority, the TGA, Therapeutics Goods Association, and the US FDA. The data from the trials is accepted by the FDA and therefore shortens the, uh, uh, given the, the low cost of running the trials in Australia and the significant range of, of people from diverse country backgrounds in Australia, you can have a successful clinical trial and shorten the path to commercialization uh, more easily than you might be able to do in Korea. And there are al already many uh, drug developers taking advantage of clinical trials in Victoria. Uh, the other thing is that we have to grow your business and to ensure the uh, development of uh, research and, and development. We have 25,000 graduates each year in this sector in Victoria, making sure that uh, companies can get the workforce that they need. Just at the bottom there, I'd note mRNA Victoria, who's attracted Moderna and BioNTech to create production facilities in Victoria, that's Pfizer, a BioNTech, um, uh, has also signed an MOU with Kitty to make sure there's partnership opportunities for Korean companies in drug uh, development in, in the mRNA area. Um, I've been talking a lot about workforce. It's the key bit. You can run your company from anywhere else in the world, but if you want to scale, then you need opportunity to, to access skilled workers. So uh, the Victorian government is making sure that in all of the key areas, for example, digital with 166,000 professionals already in the market, uh, new energy from the professional tapes that we were talking about, uh, agri-food manufacturing and bio and life sciences um, have the uh, majority, the, the largest amount of graduates from any state in Australia in these areas. Um, and in particular, there's a collaboration going on um, between uh, with Kitty and uh, some Korean organisations and the Monash um, mRNA Clinicians and Technicians Institute for developing um, the skilled workforce. Uh, these are the key bits for scaling up your company. Um, uh, so Victoria is well aware of that and is making sure that there's a good pipeline of graduates and skilled professionals to help you grow your and scale up your company. <clears throat> the organization who helps you, a bit like Cotra in, in Victoria, is Invest Victoria. Not only do we have 23 officers around the world to help you scale up again once you've been best in Victoria, but also you'll receive um, site and property location assistance, uh, advice about who to collaborate with in in uh, uh, academia and in university institutions, research institutions. We'll also facilitate connections and um, regulatory processes with other government departments. And of course, we also provide incentives and grant programs to uh, get you started in Victoria. It would, wouldn't be a presentation where they mentioned our ecosystem. I can see there it says for 2021, there were 2,100 startups in Victoria. In 2023, there are now 3,200 startups, and you can see from the chart, which is a little bit hard to read, in almost every sector we have startups, particularly strong in health, enterprise, data and analytics, and commerce. Uh, 3,200, that's uh, more than 1,000 new startups in the last two years. The pace of acceleration in Victorian area is fantastic. So that's a very quick outline about uh, Victorian opportunities. I've probably gone out for time. Uh, of course, feel free to contact us at any of those numbers or to me directly or to my staff in our Korean office. Thank you very much.